loves, welcome back to another video. This week, I have braved myself to share this cabinet here. This is where we keep everything that we use, overuse and misuse. This is the back end of my kitchen, which helps keep the display user friendly. I think that's a pretty accurate analogy of this. And it's the part that keeps everything else functioning smoothly. These are just my practical items that I reach for and turn to while I'm frying or putting away meat and vegetables and generally getting things done. The one-off pieces that do not fit into any other category or is too far away to practice the five-step rule that lives here. This is the home to those items. This is the wet kitchen where our washing takes place. The huge sink, the dishwasher, they are all here. And these are the cabinets that hold those storage containers that put away food and disposable containers to pack a meal for the workers in the neighbourhood and that sort of thing. This is also where I store things that I do not reach for frequently. I have already shown you my baking cabinet in an earlier video, but I'm keen to refresh that soon too. Now, next to the dishwasher are my pots and pans. I use basic IKEA and Tefl cookware. Ours is a multi-shelf home, so it's best to keep things easily and affordably replaceable without my heart breaking over speciality cookware. But once my kids have flown the nest, aha, that's when I plan to get my fancy set. So I have saucepans, frying pans and pots of different sizes, and we use these interchangeably for all our cooking. These are simple pullouts making it easy to get to the pans. I do not use any other organizers here because at least half or maybe even more are out most of the day. I had to actually put some back so you can see the variety of cookware that we use. I also have my pressure cooker in here, which is also in use almost every day. Okay, the fact is that Paul loves lentils, dal, and my dad doesn't eat dal at all. And I cook for both of them every day. Fun fact, that's what my home is all about. Now, above this in the overhead cabinets is the storage of all things I regularly use. These are what I would call, I don't really have a name for these pieces. Would you call them rough use utensils, the junk cabinet? Whatever it is, these are necessities. These are things that you want to shut the door on. If you're familiar with the sitcom Friends, then I'm Monica and this is my closet. I have used these Verriera risers to be able to separate different dishes instead of piling them. And these are not only easy to access, they are also easy to put away. Now these are my desi burtan, Indian kitchen items. These are made of steel and honestly last more than a lifetime. Now these are both for making paneer at home, 20 years old. This is for setting homemade yogurt, 25 years old. This is a herb container for the refrigerator, which I sometimes use. I have these bowls for marinating meat or whisking eggs, 25 years old. And this is a dollar store multi-purpose tray, which I use as a frying station. Flour, eggs, breadcrumbs, any other crumbs, and it's five years old. And this one was part of my mom's trousseau, meaning it's 60 years old. But I still use it for dry flour, when I'm kneading or rolling out pastry or chapatis. This plate and wire basket are great to drain oil when you fry. That way you can reuse the oil or recycle it instead of throwing out oil-soaked paper towels. These are my colanders, which we use all the time. I have this and I have a few more here. This one is basically not used for anything non-vegetarian. It's usually for chickpeas and fruit which means it only needs a quick wash. Now these on the other hand are used for chicken or meat and require a proper scrub after each use. Always make sure your colander has a tray to collect any water so it doesn't drip everywhere. And right on top, there if they're needed but out of regular sight, are less used tools such as this spice container I'm currently not using. In case you're wondering why it doesn't have a knob, that's because I will use whatever hardware is in the kitchen at that moment of time. These noodle strainer and the pasta strainer come out once or twice a week. I like that it sits across the sink when draining the pasta. 
I also have a food lid, which I rarely use. A milk pot lid. My mother-in-law introduced me to this and I have used it since. It keeps everything out and yet the milk cools easily. And I have been using this for 30 years at least. Now in this cabinet on the other side are my food storage containers. This side is organized again with IKEA products. These baskets are Rissa Top. I had one and I recently got five more. And these are Kubis boxes, also from IKEA. And I've had these for a while and I have used this all around the house. Now right on top are the lids and containers which I can give away. We get these when we order food in and we reuse them. I do ask for the boxes to be returned, but even if they're not, I do hope that the next person does the eco-friendly thing. Like I said, I give away anything that's not been consumed fast enough. I don't wait for things to go bad. Of course, I rather share food than waste. I have separated the lids from the containers so I can store more. Now next to that are some jars. We get these when we buy or get cookies and reuse them to give away home-baked cookies. And like I said, I hope the next person does the same. In this shelf, I store these ice cube trays. Now we used to use these before we got a refrigerator with a built-in ice dispenser. And now I use these to store herbs left over from the week. Or recently, we have started using these for evaporated milk. My hubby drinks coffee maybe twice a week and he likes it with evaporated milk, but it always goes bad before it gets finished. So now when we open a can, it goes straight into this box. It remains good all the way to the end. This is for containers in general. Any homeless container has to go in here. And this one is for expansion. Every good system must have a space for growth. Without this extra space, without this wiggle room, any single additional item might create a huge project to reorganize everything. I have labeled all the baskets except this one. The point is to remember exactly what font you used and which size. And that, my loves, is beyond me. So what I do is, I make a small label and stick it to the door. This way, I won't have to remake all the labels when I need to change or add just one. These are IKEA freezer safe containers. I have used this without any complaint for many years. I have used them in teal, but those have disappeared from IKEA altogether. My son's friends love packing up get together leftovers and my boxes never come back. So I had to get some new ones. They also come in yellow, orange and green lids, but I like this the best. Now these are one plate dinner put away boxes. As you can see, some of these items don't even have a proper name. Well, I put one full serving of every main and side into one box and leave it for one of my sons. So all he has to do is reheat it in the microwave and he can eat from the box itself. I put just about any meal with the exception of probably soups in here. And these are biscuit boxes from our biscuit and snack drawer. I sometimes need to change up the sizes of the boxes to suit the content. And this is where the empty ones go. It's also easy to empty a new pack of cookies or nachos into this instead of, you know, struggling to seal and store a random bag somewhere. These boxes are, I believe, Till Slutter from IKEA, but they are no longer available. They have been discontinued. So I have not been able to replace these, although they are now very much worn. Right up here, far away from the general reach, are some extra random cleaning products. Rarely used, but needed nonetheless. Those go up here. If you always wondered where I put those random items that you sometimes see me use, well, this is where it goes. This is probably the junkiest part of the junk drawer, but that doesn't mean it can't be organized. These white baskets allow me to see what's inside even before I get on the step stool. So I always know what I'm reaching for. And by containing it, I make sure my random item collection doesn't overflow its space. I also have one with empty mason jars and this jala maker here. I make roti jala or egg jala with this.
And there is also no other place for these empty apple cider vinegar bottles, which can definitely be repurposed. And here I have one more narrow space. These are the thermoses which are needed from time to time when someone's not feeling well or having a cough and it's great to have them handy. And these are magazine holders for all my parchment paper and wraps. There's aluminium foil as well and this one has silicon reusable bags. I know it's currently trending to have these in that pretty organizer in a drawer but I don't have a drawer to spare and this works just fine. And these are water bottles. We have these dollar store ones for smaller quantities and these bigger ones are from Typo. And right on top are some fruit baskets. Now these are great for unripened fruit that is, has to be left on the counter or for smaller fruit that need to be contained. And that's how I have kept my junk cabinet neat, simplified and organised. Every house has random items that are difficult to store. Embrace the opportunity to think out of the box for solutions that can bring not only functionality, but also aesthetic appeal to something quite mundane. And that, my loves, brings us to the end of today's video. I hope you have taken back with you some ideas to create a spot for your junk and then make it the best version of itself. With that, this is Ravina Singh saying, Happy Homemaking!